Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another value-packed laptop. This one from Acer. This is their Swift 3. It's a pretty lightweight 14-inch laptop with a 10th generation Intel chip inside, an i5. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Acer. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So the price point on this one is $699, uh, pretty reasonable for what you'll be seeing here. So let's dive into the hardware now. We've got an i5-1035G1. It has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in dual channel configuration. Uh, but note, the RAM is not upgradable, unfortunately, so you're locked in at 8 for life. It's all soldered on the board, and there's no expansion capabilities. It does, though, have a good amount of storage, a 512 gigabyte NVMe. That is upgradable if you ever need to swap that out. Not too hard to do. You just have to unscrew the bottom here to get at it. Uh, we've got a 14-inch display. It's a 1080p display. Looks pretty nice, but like many mid to low-end laptops, it's not all that bright in bright environments. I've got it turned up all the way right now. Looks okay, but again, there are brighter laptops out there. I do like, though, that the hinge on the Acer, like many other Acers that we've looked at, uh, goes flat to the desk. So if you have an over-eager kid or something, they're not going to snap the display off of it. The build quality is really nice on this. It is a magnesium alloy, and as such, it is super lightweight, uh, 2.62 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. I was surprised by how lightweight this was because we've looked at other Swift 3s in the past that were plastic and heavier. This one really is a step in the right direction there. You even have all the thin bezeling on the display too, which looks nice. Uh, this area here is plastic, but the rest of it uh, is all metal. There is a little 720p webcam up here, nothing spectacular, but you do have that kind of hidden up there at the top, so that's good. And the keyboard on the new Acer here feels pretty good to me. Uh, typically with Acer keyboards, I've found that their keys are smaller than the competitions are. Uh, these keys are not much bigger than prior Acer devices, but I think they're spaced apart better, so I'm finding it's easier to type on it. And as such, I didn't have to really get used to the keyboard at all. So that was good to see. As you can also see here, it is a backlit keyboard and you have some degree of control over how bright the keyboard is uh, with this key right here. So you have a couple of levels of brightness. I wasn't crazy about the trackpad though. It feels a little on the cheap side to me, uh, especially given how nice the laptop feels overall. This one component uh, wasn't doing much for me. It tracks okay, it seems to work just fine, but it just doesn't feel as premium as the rest of the package does. It's a little spongy to me, but otherwise uh, the input on the device is definitely an improvement over prior ones. Uh, by the way, this is not a touch display, so you'll be using that trackpad quite a bit. Now for ports, we've got a surprise on this one. You've got your power on here, of course, and your HDMI out, a full-size USB 3, but you also have a Thunderbolt 3 port here on the left-hand side. This, of course, is also compatible with USB-C devices. This is a full-service port, so you can power the laptop through it as well, get video out, and, of course, connect up uh, data devices and Thunderbolt 3 devices to it as well. So if you wanted to connect up an external GPU, you could plug it right into the port there and be off and running with it. So I was really pleased to see that on a sub $1,000 laptop. And if you have a dock or something, you could run everything off a single cable and just leave the power cord in your bag for travel if you wanted to do that. On the other side, we've got a full headphone jack, Oddly, a USB 2.0 port here, which is funny to see on a modern laptop. And we've got a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. The speakers are downward firing. They sound okay for downward firing speakers. Nothing spectacular, but of course it has Bluetooth and the headphone jack so you can plug in better quality speakers. Uh, this is not a fanless laptop because it is running with a regular i5 chip. Uh, the fan, though, isn't all that noisy, and we'll talk about some of the thermal performance that uh, we tested on the laptop in a little bit here. So, altogether, a pretty nice package, I think, for the price point. It's really nice to see that Thunderbolt port on there. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So let's kick things off with some web browsing and see how it does with the basics. 
Uh, we've got uh, Chrome here running, and we'll just go over to the NASA.gov homepage, which is a very multimedia-rich site. As expected, this seems to be working pretty nicely here. Uh, we're connected to my AC wireless network, but this supports Wi-Fi 6 as well, which is great. Uh, one annoyance is that it does have Norton antivirus on here that keeps popping up asking you to install things, and I'm sure the subscription stuff is going to pop up soon as well. So you might want to take a few minutes just to uninstall some of the bloatware that they put on here. Sometimes when you pay a reasonable price for a laptop, you get hit with uh, pre-installed software that you may not want. A little bit earlier, we also tested its YouTube performance. We like to play some of the high frame rate video on it to see how it performs. Uh, there we were seeing uh, no drop frames with a 1080p 60 frames per second video running from YouTube. So I think all of the Netflix and Amazon Prime and all the other things you might want to watch on here uh, should work fine. So a pretty decent web browsing device and a good multimedia device too. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 193.3 on version 1.0 of that test and 110 on version 2.0. That puts it very close to a pair of laptops we've looked at recently with the i7 variant of this 10th generation Intel chip. So altogether, it's performing as we expected it to, at least with the basics. Now, battery life on this one isn't the best. It's about six to seven hours an hour testing, doing the basics like the web browsing we just talked about. If you are stressing the processor more with video editing or gaming or something along those lines, you will see less battery life. And speaking of gaming, let's check out how games run on this thing. So let's begin with Fortnite, and there we were seeing frame rates between 20 and 40 frames per second at low settings, 1080p. Not spectacular, but playable. Uh, we then booted up Rocket League, 1080p, lowest settings, about 45 to 60 frames per second. Half-Life 2, which is an older game, uh, that came in at 1080p at 100 plus frames per second, so no problems with the older stuff, as is usually the case with these Intel based graphics chipsets. And then GTA 5 we were able to boot up. Uh, I was only though really playable at 720p and there we were getting frame rates between 27 and 50 frames per second depending on what was going on in the scene. Uh, typically we didn't see frame rates higher than 40 frames per second while driving. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test we got a score of 9,663 and that is an improvement over the prior generation i5 chips that we've looked at. But as you'll see here, the current generation i7s do much better. And the reason is, is that the i7 chips have a better graphics system built into them than the i5s do. There's actually a real difference now in graphics performance between the two chips. In the past, we didn't see that as much. Uh, now it's a very big difference. So if you are looking to play games on a relatively compact laptop, uh, you might want to look at the i7s over the i5s because they will perform better. Uh, but nonetheless, we are still seeing an improvement over the prior generation, just not as much as what you'll see going from the prior gen i7 to a current gen i7. So just keep all that in mind when you're out shopping. And on the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the laptop does under heavy sustained loads, we got a score of 97.2%. Uh, that is a passing grade, which means that the laptop is not likely to throttle itself all that much when it's placed under sustained loads for long periods of time. Uh, so that's good for gaming, it's good for video editing. You'll just wanna make sure that you keep the uh, vents on this clear so it can get good airflow. Uh, the fan noise wasn't offensive on this. It'll certainly be there, although we're not finding the fan kicking on all that often. It's really coming on when you are playing games and doing things that are a little bit more strenuous than the basics. Let's take a look now and see if it can run Linux. All right, so we've got Ubuntu running here on the laptop. Everything was detected properly, including Wi-Fi, audio, Bluetooth, uh, all the basics here seem to be working just fine and it feels just as snappy here on Linux as it does on the Windows side. Uh, we've been seeing some of these newer Intel-based devices do much better with Ubuntu and other Linux distributions. So I think if you're looking to play around with Linux, you can probably get it done here without too many problems. And altogether, I think it's a pretty solid value for what it is. Reasonably priced, nice build quality, good performance, decent display, Battery life is so-so, but that's really the only thing I've got to complain about on this one. And I really like the fact that we've got Thunderbolt 3 
at this segment of the market now, and that's certainly going to provide a lot of fun things that you can do uh, with these low-cost laptops, namely adding that uh, external GPU for better gaming performance, for example. So uh, great value, definitely worth checking out if you are in the market for a mid-range laptop, and that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.